our series on the names of God. Today we're going to be looking at the name El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. Now there, there's quite a debate about the translation of this word El Shaddai. Some believe it to be mighty God. You will see in your Bible that it is very often translated as I am El Shaddai, I am the almighty God. Yet it doesn't describe just the power of God, but the emphasis is on the sufficiency of his power. And so many, when we, we praise him as El Shaddai, we praise him as the all sufficient one. It's the acknowledgement that God's might, his power is sufficient for all of our needs. The word's used 48 times in the Old Testament. 31 times it is used by a particular man, and that man is Job. 31 times he refers to God as El Shaddai. And I think, you know, probably Job out of any of us needed to know God as El Shaddai because he lost everything. And yet he had learned that, that God was enough. He was sufficient. And I, I love the fact that God revealed his power to Job. And Job realized that in his power, God is sufficient. First occurrence of the word El Shaddai appears in Genesis 17, 1, when God appeared to Abraham. Again, it's translated as Almighty God. In Genesis 17, 1, we read, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God. I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. Throughout the Bible, when God revealed himself as El Shaddai, it was most often in the context of a promise that he was going to give or a reminder of the promise that he was going to keep for his people. So in Genesis 17, God told Abraham, make a covenant with him and multiply him exceedingly. And Abraham's response was that he just fell on his face. Throughout Genesis, when God's blessing was evoked, the name El Shaddai was used. The God who promised Abraham, his descendant Jacob used the name as you made this promise to Abraham, and I know you will keep it. You are El Shaddai. Now, there's two things I, I want us to glean from the, the Hebrew word here. One, this word Shaddai, S-H-A-D, and then D-A-I, is made up of two words. She, meaning who, and Dai, sufficient. Some add the phrase for you. So, El Shaddai is God, El, who is sufficient. Whether true in the Hebrew or not, when I add this name to my prayer vocabulary, I always say, you are El Shaddai. You are sufficient for me. It's important for us to make these names personal. He is the God who is sufficient for me to say, God, you are enough for me. It's also believed that the word Shaddai comes from the word Shad, and that word is translated as breasts. The connection uh, here focuses on the nourishment and the sufficiency of the breast as, as comfort and provision of food. It's all the child needs. It's all the child wants. This is the idea of El Shaddai, the one who supplies all the nourishment we need for this life. I love, I read a story about a mom who was tending goats in the old days and she had a baby that could crawl and she put the baby down and as she was tending the, the goats, the baby crawled over to the edge of the cliff. Now the mom felt like she didn't have enough time to get up and run over and grab that baby and rescue the baby from falling off the cliff, but she had a better solution. And what that mom did was she just lifted up her shirt and revealed her breasts. And when that baby saw the breast, the baby turned right around and crawled back to his mom. See, that's what God wants of us. That when we look at him, we see he's enough. Whatever we see when we look beyond a cliff and we think it looks tempting, we think we need something else, God says, 
when I reveal myself as El Shaddai, he wants us to, to know you're enough and declare he's enough. The Greek translation of this Hebrew word Shaddai is often worthy. We see in Luke 3.16, John the Baptist declaring about Jesus, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy, I am not sufficient to loose. And then we see in John 7, 16, when the centurion came to Jesus asking him for healing. And he said, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I'm not sufficient. I'm not good enough. Both of these are examples of man's unworthiness, lack of sufficiency to be what we would like to be. But our God's not lacking, and we do not lack when we look to him. Paul, as did Abraham and so many others, discovered God's sufficiency. Remember when he had that plague, the thorn of the flesh? Nothing would take it away. He prayed three times, pleading. Who showed up? Jesus. And Jesus showed up exhibiting himself as El Shaddai. And he said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness and and paul's response therefore most gladly i will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me strength power the strength of god the power of god paul said it's sufficient his grace exhibited through his power and through his strength. That's all I need. I'll glory in that. Or should I, El Shaddai is strong. Or El Shaddai is powerful. And the power and strength of our El Shaddai is sufficient. It is worthy. It is enough. So when we pray the name El Shaddai, when we say you are El Shaddai, you are the all-sufficient one. You are sufficient for me. See, we're declaring, I'm going to find my contentment in you. Everything else is icing, Lord, but you meet my needs. You are enough. You are sufficient, all sufficient, my precious El Shaddai. Add that one to your prayer list when you look around and feel so needy to look to him and say, but you, you are my El Shaddai. God bless you.